So, welcome back to the Arsenal podcast and we are back at it again. So, um, transfers, the video is dropping a little late because, um, like I said, not so much of transfers is really happening um, around Arsenal. We are done with the transfer window, so we are basically looking at what uh, pundits and panelists are writing about the club. Uh, but we are linked with um, a familiar face, a familiar figure, Dominic Sizobolai. One player who, you know, who has been linked with Arsenal ever since I think when he was 17 years of age, now he's 20. Uh, but again, we are linked with him that we could actually go for him uh, in the January transfer summer. Like I told you, most of the players you will see, we are linked to them because we have that, you know, we lack that, you know, midfield creativity. Uh, Messi Rosilla is as well, uh, you know, uh, around all the sagas and so on, is linked with Al Nasser. And they have offered some money uh, to us you know, to take him away from the club. Remember, they all, you know, they came in for him in the summer, but you know, he never wanted to uh, make a switch. Um, there, there is also interest from Major League Soccer as well as Venbache. So we're going to be discussing all that. Make sure you have dropped a like on the video, you subscribe to the channel, and make sure you share uh, widely on Facebook and on WhatsApp, Telegram. I think those are the biggest platforms where football is. You can also share on Click. So, we are getting the party started. Where should we start? Messi Dose. Today, Arsenal have received an offer of 5 million uh, from Al Nasser, that is um, in UAE. They want to take the player for 5 million. Messi Dose um, is, is, is under a lot of stress at Arsenal. There is a crisis he's going through. Um, there is a lot of politics being played, you know, you know uh, around him. I was talking to a friend yesterday and... He was asking me because he was the problem with you know with Messi Rosil. Is it the board? Is it Mikel Arteta? Um, you know his things. Uh, you know there are so many stories to explain his you know, the situation he is in at Arsenal. Remember, um, there is a conspiracy theory that you know he tweeted something about you know China and so on, uh, and then that Muslim stuff, and then you know that's where his problem started you know other people saying his attitude on the pitch and uh, you know the problems you know he doesn't want to just you know just for the ball around and Mikel Arteta doesn't want that you know that kind of player then the pay cut you know things came in uh, he refused to take that pay cut uh, along with you know other Arsenal players and then you know those problems but still he is an Arsenal player one of the most paid players at Arsenal and so many uh, you know so many staff members have been cut off uh, you know, their, you know, uh, their jobs and also is one of the people that are being looked at that you know these people are losing their jobs you're getting 350k a week you don't want to take a pay cut um, you're not you're literally not playing football you know at the club you're selfish so you know there, there are a lot of you know theories to explain you know the problem is you know um, is facing but for me I think um, by the time we decided to give Ozil 350k a week, that means, you know, at that time he deserved it. He deserved it. The, you know, he was the best player at, at Arsenal with Alexis Sanchez. We had an option to give both of them a contract, uh, which Alex Sanchez said, no, I want to go. I, you know, I, I want to test, you know, the waters, the pastures outside Arsenal. He went. Ozil was like, no, I'm going to stay because... You know, we had a problem of selling our best players and we wanted Ozil to stay because he was, you know, he was one of our best players. He stayed, we were happy, and then two seasons after, you know, his contract extension, this happens. How do you explain that? Literally, after, you know, signing his big contract, he didn't achieve anything. He didn't achieve anything for Arsenal after, you know, getting that big wage. Now, there is um, interest from Al Nasser back again because uh, you know they, like i said they came for him in the summer and he refused to go they had given him i think 15 million per year uh, that was a big contract that was a big contract but i think um he undermined and was you know he thought about it and you of course even if i was i, I was the one and i'm you know Mesirozo, why don't i stay at us and get that 350k a week and uh you know for free i'm not playing football and then my contract expires i'll get a club in major league soccer because Ozil is a brand. I know there are so many things that are, are you know happening around him, affecting his brand. Adidas has cancelled his lifetime project, you know, uh, ad, you know, lifetime sponsorship and all those things. He has lost you know so many deals as an ambassador, but he's still a brand. 
if you if he gets out of Arsenal, gets him you know himself out of these problems he is facing right now, he's gonna become another brand somewhere. You know, get you know brand support and so on. He's not going to you know run bankrupt. So there is you know interest from Al Nasser, but I doubt he'll go to that club. If he was to go, he should have gone already because they offered him a big you know a, a, a big money deal, uh, but he, you know he rejected. Now there is also interest from Major League Soccer, and this is where. Um, he might go because you know we have seen literally we have seen so many stars uh, in their thirties, in their thirty, you know, thirty-three, thirty-four, um, go to the major league soccer after they want to rest. It's like it's like a resting camp. I don't I don't think even there is you know football in America. I think it's just you know a resting camp. You know, someone you know, is like, you know, I, I'm just tired of, you know, this stress, you know, football is stressing. Let me go to the major league soccer, you know, pluck some money off the tree and then go into retirement loaded because i think I, I, i'm not really saying you know there isn't any football in america i i, I understand um and i appreciate their efforts you know in, in, in trying to build that you know football brand uh you know outside europe it really means a lot it really means a lot but it's really it, it, it really doesn't you know sound so much like you know that there is football in america than like it sounds that there is you know basketball i, I think you get the point or this, you know, kind of American football where, you know, people just run around with the ball, uh, you know, and people call it American football. And I'm like, why, why, why is this called American football anyway? Anyway, so, um, there is also interest from the Major League Soccer. There is interest from the, um, from the Major League Soccer. And I know if he decides to go to the Major League Soccer, uh, he's going to get some decent amount of money. Um, USA is a club, you know, is, is a country where life, you can enjoy life. And you know... Um, Ozil is a lifeist, you know, he, he, he's, a, you know, he's this kind of guy who wants to put on, you know, so well, like Heki Bellerin, he's this kind of guy, you know, who wants to, you know, chill around the, you know, the, the streets, chill around the beaches and so on, uh, hang around with women, I think, you know, he's going to get that, you know, already he has the fame, I think Major League Soccer would be, big, you know, a big option, however, uh, because he's, um, because, yeah, you know, there is that, you know, blood, Turkish blood in him. Uh, there are interests uh, and reports that you know he could actually go uh, and retire in uh, in Turkey. And um, the club there that is interested in is, is, is Fenerbahce. Um, if I look at Fenerbahce, they have been tracking Messi Ozil for uh, quite a lot of time, and he has been denouncing them, rejecting them. They wanted him on loan; he refused. They wanted to sign him um, on a permanent, but he still refused. Um, I don't think he will go to Fenerbahce because. You know, he's going to look at two things when he's leaving us. One, where do I get the money? And where do I get to establish myself? Uh, at least, if not as a footballer, at least as a lifeist. At least, where am I going to get some news? Now, you, you know, you, you, you're going to go to, to, to Turkey. You enter Turkey, you're going to get stuck. Like, real, real stuck. You're going to get stuck down in the woods of Turkey. You, you know, don't make that mistake. You wouldn't make that mistake. It's like going to China. You're going to get the money, but there is no news. Literally, China is like a spaceship that you know disappears off the radar. You get, you know, you're a footballer, you get into China, you disappear. And there are some players that you know have you know have good statistics. They have scored some good, you know, some good numbers of goals, um, played so well in China, but you literally don't hear anyone like you know speaking about I wanna sign someone, this guy from China. Really, it's like it's like a spaceship that you know runs off the radar. So I I, I wouldn't expect him to go to Turkey, but if he wants money and not news, he would go to China. But he wants, I think he needs the news if he's going to still you know influence those brands of his. So I think Major League Soccer would be the best option um, in my case. Now, apart from the, the player who wants to leave, we are linked to this guy, Dominic. Zobozlai, I think that's the name. He's Hungarian, born in 2000 and um, 2000 actually. That means you know that, that means he's 20 years of age. Dominic Zobozlai. Um, he's a playmaker. This season he has appeared four times on the pitch, one goal and three assists. I think you know what I'm talking about. The reason reason as to why I pulled off those statistics are uh, fast. Last season, um, if I look at last season, what did he really pull off? He had um, 18 appearances, 9 from the bench, uh, so he only started um, 
less than nine appearances there. Uh, he started 11. Um, those 11, he started nine. Um, nine goals and 10 assists. That means he engaged in 19 goals, uh, you know, in, nine, in 18 appearances last season. So he's the kind of player that we want, you know, we want. So he's literally a playmaker. He's literally uh, a creative midfielder. He plays with um, RB Salzburg, Red Bull Salzburg um, in Austria. And he's this kind of player that has been on the Arsenal radar um, for three years now. Just like you see Thomas Partey. Uh, there was interest from Arsenal uh, for Thomas Partey almost three years back when he was, you know, he was, when he was 25, 24. Now he's 27. He, you know, he joins Arsenal. Now Dominic Zobozla is another player that we want to get in in the general transfer window according to reports in uh, football.london um, like I say, uh, it's, it's, it's really going to be hard for us to sign in more players or big players um, in January if we don't sell so that is the problem but if I, if, if I can look at his market value it is 20, you know, 25 million euros um, just like you know, Yassim, just like Said Ben Rama or, or, or Buendia that is the, that's the range but you know, he's 25 million um, actually, 30 million cheaper than how Semawa. Maybe uh, that's what you think about. He's playing with um, uh, Salzburg. I don't doubt this, you know, the, 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 the um, talents RB Salzburg brings. Takumi Minamino, Side Your Money, Eiling Haaland, and now Zoboznai. They also have Pat Sandaka. And they are very good at sporting talent. Actually, if I can, if you can look at you know the, the, the players that have come through, RB Salzburg, very very high talents. It has produced very high talents, very quality players. So I would decide to go for Zobos. Like he has nice statistics. I've not seen seen him so much play, um, you know, on the pitch, but he has good statistics, and I would take him for that. Um, a player who appears 18 times and he mingles in 19 goals in a season. That is special at 20 years of age, 25 million euros. Of course, um, now because his contract, if you look at his contract, um, he joined in, in, in 2018 and his contract expires in 2022. So that means in January, um, his contract, his contract in, in January, his contract will have one year. You get it. You'll have one year to go. Of course, a player who has a year to go to, you know, on his contract um, is, in, is not going to be so expensive. But you, we have to acknowledge the fact that there is going to be a lot of competition for the player. Especially that you know, clubs like Real Madrid, Barcelona, um, you know, clubs like Olympic Lyon. If Lyon lose um, House Moua for something like 50 million and 60, they can you know, bring in that you know, Dominic Zobos like, uh, at something like at something, at something like 25 or 20 million euros. Um, it would work for them. So uh, there is going to be a lot of competition. I think Arsenal know that. Um, and if, if we are going to go for his signature, we got to be ready. We have to be ready to fight off the competition. I'm not really saying that, you know, he's this kind of player who's going to attract everybody. But when a player is top-notch at that age, there are a lot of, you know, clubs that want to sign him. Clubs that, you know, the, the clubs that see big potential in him uh, and they think he's already a top-class player. There are clubs that want to develop him more because if 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 Dortmund, Dortmund came in for um, Zobozlai, they would take him because they, they, they would tell him they would convince him that they would make him someone like um, a Christian Pulisic, something like that. You know, he would be attracted. If Leon you know, would want to take him, they would take him. You know, because you know they make you know such clubs make you know players feel they are going to de develop his style. Now there are clubs like United, clubs like Arsenal, club, uh, clubs like Chelsea, top class, play, you know, top class teams, for, you know, world class teams, you have Champions League, they have the money, and they can convince the players well, and convince Arabi, you know, South. But so, it's going to be on, on, on how we move on the Deadwood, and um, how much do we have to spend in the general transfer window. Uh, usually our budget is not even 30 million euros. Because if I look at you know, the general transfer window, you know, you know, this year, we brought in Cedric on loan, we brought in um, Pablo Mari on loan. Uh, who do we, you know, who else do we bring in? Isn't it that, you know, isn't that all? I think that's all. So, you know, our 
our budgets are not really, you know, big in the generators for window. And of course, um, you know, by January, we shall be playing football without fans in the pitch, fans in the stands. That means Arsenal is still facing the same financial constraints we have been faced this year, even, you know, starting next year. Probably we pray that, you know, by, um, by January, fans are coming back to the pitch so that, we, you know, we can have a good summer where we, where we can splash around 100 million. Of course, if, if you're splashing 100 million and you ask, no, that means you're bringing in around three players. Yeah, that would be interesting, right? That would be interesting. So, um, basically, that is it. Messi Rozil, um, our Nas are interested, 5 million. We, you know, should we sell Messi Rozil for 5 million? We bought him at 42.4.5. Should we bring, you know, should we really sell him at uh, 5 million? There isn't anything, there isn't anything we are going to gain uh, by keeping him around. If he decides to leave, I think we should let him go. But if he wants to stay, then his contract must first expire before he leaves the club. My name is Kosi, and this is the Arsenal Podcast. Smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, give me a comment down below, and make sure, make sure you've hit the notification button so that every Arsenal story that comes around, you're the first person to know. Have a blessed, blessed time of the channel.